Hello everyone, it's Michelle here with another video. I hope you're doing well. The prospect of Chris Watts applying for a 35C to get his case reviewed has inspired a lot of live streams recently, a lot of interviews with people that have either been writing to Chris or have been speaking to Chris and in this video I want to explore some of that but first I just want to say to people who think the case is closed and that this is history Chris's case is closed but he's applying for a case review so he wants his case reopening in effect now last night I watched a live stream between Unmurdered or Heather and Sherilyn Cadle and both of those people have been disbelieved the opposite side those that are trying to apply for the 35c don't want to hear what people like them have got to say but i believe that heather is genuine and i also believe that Sherilyn cadle is as well i go through the letters that she's put in her book the letters from chris so you can't deny that these letters are genuine. You can't deny that Sherilyn had communication with Chris. Now, some of what she's put in her book is her opinion and she makes it clear that it is. So in the interview, the, the stream that I watched between Heather and Sherilyn last night, not last night my time as I'm recording this, I was very interested but also really disturbed about some of the things that Sherilyn said that Chris had told her. It's disturbing but I'm not surprised by it and in this video I want to discuss those. So there is a warning here that what I'm going to discuss is disturbing because I'm going to be talking about the death of the girls make your decision as to whether you want to carry on with this video or not and i will leave a link to um, the live stream between heather and Sherilyn in the description box something's upsetting up here For me, listening to the live stream last night, two things that Sherilyn said disturbed me the most. One of them was something that I'd never heard anyone say before. I've never heard Sherilyn say it before, but it makes sense. On the 14th of August, when the dog search occurred through the house, one of the dogs was going mad, alerting, very clearly alerting in the basement. I've asked before in a previous video, why was that basement not forensically tested? That dog was going mad alerting. They knew the dog was upset. They didn't investigate further. But Sherilyn has said something really, really horrible. We know the confession at Wisconsin was expanded upon a little bit when Chris talk to Sherilyn through letters and through uh, prison visits. And that was, he tried to kill the girls before he left, instead of smothering them at the oil site, which is what he eventually did. But he tried to kill them before he left, but they woke back up. But it's what he said to Sherilyn, so this is what Sherilyn said last night, Cece is possibly the thing that the dog was alerting to in the basement. At the Wisconsin interview, agents Tammy Lee and Graham Corder asked Chris specifically about what was going on in the basement. Their sensors in the house indicated activity in the basement. A lot of steps. The basement door was left open. Have a listen to what Chris said about the basement. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door open. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So there was a lot of movement, you know, a 
think it was around 426 or something. And the garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps. Of the I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so like the basement, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing I really have down there is my workout, my the bench press. Workout. Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? Did you think about, well, maybe I'll take her out that way or is it a walkout basement? No. It wasn't at your house. Okay. No, it's like a garden level basement. So okay. But now I don't remember really. I'm, what's that? I don't think it worked out that morning. Like were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely packed the lunch and everything. Did all that, but I don't. I don't remember about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there at that time. Yeah, you got trash bags from there? Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe there wasn't any in the garage and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. So there was a roll in your truck. There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. So that was very vague. Maybe I worked out then. Maybe I went down to the basement. Maybe I left the door open. Maybe I went down for trash bags. Apparently, what he told Sherilyn was something really different and really alarming. In that, he took Cece down to the basement. He thought she was dead, tried to put her in the fridge, which could have been why the dog was alert in there to see see scent he couldn't get her in the fridge so he either tried to put her in a tote or a tub and then she woke up so she woke up in the basement well that makes sense for why the dog was alerting there it's terrifying to think about what that little girl was experiencing Sherilyn believes that she was brain damaged but she was able to walk out to the truck and then Chris suffocated her at the oil site. Bella also walked back up. Bella was more alert and Sherilyn has doubled down and, and said again, she said this on um, um, Armchair Detectives channel, but she didn't put it in the book. She didn't put it in the new book because he hadn't written it in a letter and she wasn't sure whether it was appropriate to give this level of detail like all at once or whether people should be protected from certain things but she said last night she was asked a question and she said now this possibly was just her opinion she was asked whether she believed Bella was dead actually dead when she was put into the oil tank well we know she didn't breathe because there was no oil in her lungs if she was breathing then there would have been oil in her lungs but she could have been just dead so what i mean is not breathing not breathing anymore but still not quite dead there's that small window of time when you stop breathing before your brain actually dies it terrifies me to think that bella walked up to the top of those tanks herself with Chris carrying Cece dead and Bella actually walking up and then him killing her at the top. I swing backwards and forwards. I don't want that to be true. I feel that it might be. But Sherilyn said that she wasn't sure whether actually the final death came when he tried to get her in. You know, if you think about an eight inch diameter hole and how a four-year-old child would fit through that hole. And some of the things that have been sealed are about the girls. You know, we, we can only imagine. It's, it's absolutely horrifying. And it's understandable, I guess, why Chris wouldn't want to even voice those kind of things. You know, he has said there, that there are things that he did that he will take to his grave. And perhaps... Just the horror of even thinking back about what he did to his own daughters are some of the things that haunt him now and that are leaking out little bit by little bit, but which he will truly take to his grave.
horrifying details. But Chris is where he belongs and he should never, never get out. Never get out. That's for sure. So thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing if you have done so. The channel is growing. If you're enjoying the videos and you're not yet subscribed, please do so and help the channel grow further. I hope you're well. I've been Michelle and I'll see you in the next video.